Hello, this is Mike Migalski. I'd like to share with you about the product InfoSecure, which allows you to share your data widely while protecting it fiercely. I'm with InfoVIA, and InfoVIA is a uh, services organization that uh, is tasked with helping growth-minded organizations to simplify and secure their data management practices. And through our practices, we've found that while pulling data together and integrating it and making it usable into a product is valuable, the need to secure that data and make it shareable with confidence is paramount. And so therefore, InfoSecure was born. These are some of the clients we've worked with in the past and uh, ha have found that the common challenge across a practically any client in any industry is the need to be able to use the data internally and externally with clients and partners and uh, employees and share that data widely to, to support data-driven decisions. But at the same time, there's constant threats from breach, whether accidental or nefarious, and the, com the compliance and, regula and regu regulations are constantly changing. So there's this constant need to go stop, go faster, but slow down. And so we're here to su suggest to you that productivity and risk management can coexist. And we believe that the way that that can happen is through policy management inside of metadata. So our InfoSecure uh, policy management architecture is the three-tiered architecture. You'll see our UI in uh, in use here in this demo. It uh, talks to the API, which in turn talks to the database. And we're going to show you some financial mm -hmm. transactions, essentially a credit card statement in this demo with three different user personas that have various levels of access to that credit card data. So there's a set of payees that make up the transactions, all right? And those payees are grouped into regions. And Anna, mm -hmm. who's an admin, Anna can see all the regions, north, south, east, and west regions. Whereas Vic, who's a viewer, can only see the north and south regions, no payees from the east or west. Anna has full identity access, so she can see their names, their full names, where Vic has restricted identity access, exhibited here by the uh, his ability to see only the first two characters of the name. Likewise, on the transaction side, Anna can see all types of transactions, fees, payments, sales, and cash advances, where, where Vic is restricted from seeing cash advances. And then Anna has financial access, where Vic does not. And then there's this uh, third persona, which is Ivan the imposter, and he's given no access at all to show you that by default, we deny access to any of the data. So with that, let's move over to our InfoSecure UI where we're going to show you how to administer that data. So the UI looks like this on the splash screen. I'm going to log in as myself. You'll see that I enjoy uh, uh, admin privileges. You'll see a set of users that the database is aware of, of which Anna, Ivan, and Vic are part of these users. You'll notice that Vic has the role viewer, whereas Anna has the role admin. And then, of course, Ivan the imposter has no roles assigned to him. So by default, he sees nothing. So let's look at those those roles. You'll see that the admin role has access to the fees, payments, sales, and cash advances, as we said, clear identity, all the regions, and financial access, where the role viewer has a much smaller subset of access. And finally, um, we have the ability to manage those classes like this. You'll see that the, the class called fees and payments has the uh, transaction type fee and transaction type payment elements within it. OK, and these can be configured into classes that make up any type of. Um, um, combinations of rules for your policies. So with that, with this metadata, we'll come back to this in a minute to show you how we can change the, the metadata or the meta policies through this interface in order to affect what data is actually viewed. But first, let's look at the raw data. We're going to be using our everyone's favorite BI tool, Excel, to query the data right out of the database. And you can see that, that there's a set of transactions here. There's 35 transactions in this list. And one of them is a cash advance. That's important because if you'll remember, we don't give Vic access to cash advance transactions, so he doesn't see that row. Likewise, there's a 
uh, uh, financial data, the dollar amounts here, are uh, restricted from VIX access, whereas Anna, the admin, can see those things. All right. Now, the data, or sorry, the other set of client data is the distinct set of payees. And these, as you can see in that last rightmost column, are organized by the region in which those PEs exist. And then there's this kind of weird any region that applies to a subset of the payees uh, in the in the set. But 33 different distinct payees for 35 different transaction rows. OK, so let's let's go out to our database and let's uh, let's see what our impersonation capability allows us to see. All right, now impersonation basically says you're logged in as person X, but we've granted you the permission. We've granted someone else permission to, to impersonate you. All okay? right, so in this case, we're impersonating Vic. All right, and that's in place from now until sometime in the future. Now, this is the current policies that are in place for the current user. So the user Vic has these policies. These mimic what you saw in the user interface. This is just showing that at the database level, we can query the policies that are in effect for this user. And this is important because we use these policies, this meta metadata, to filter and mask data appropriately. So here's a piece of metadata that would mask the identity column. Here's some filter metadata that says fees, payments, and down here sales can be seen by Vic. So let's see that in play. Let's refresh the data from this sheet. And remember, we're connecting as Vic, and so Vic doesn't see all 33 payees. He only sees seven of them. Why seven? Because there were only seven in the North and South regions. You'll also notice that Vic only sees the first two characters of the name. And in the transaction list, Vic only sees fees, payments, and sales, but that cash advance row is missing. Why is it missing? Because Vic doesn't have access to cash advance rows. Likewise, Vic doesn't have access to financial data, so that is gone as well. Well, that's partially useful and that's valuable and it's interesting to see how Vic has different levels of access than say Anna did, but really what makes the most sense is when we put these two views together. Instead of having a payees view and a transactions view, let's join that data together and now you'll see what what we call cell level security looks like. So now Vic sees the same 34 transaction rows, no cash advance, but he only sees the payees that are related to those transactions for the North and South regions. So you see kind of a sparse matrix here of data. Well, that's because he isn't allowed to say P see payees in the East and West regions. Likewise, he can only see the first two characters of the name. Well, let's just say for a moment that that's not the way we want Vic to, to operate. So remember, Vic is a viewer. So we're going to go in here and we're going to give him access to the East and West regions as well. So with a couple clicks there, we give Vic access to East and West regions. And now you'll see instead of only seven payees, he sees 29. And now this sparse matrix got a little less sparse because now the only payees that he doesn't see are the ones that were marked as the any region for fees and payments. And here from the East and West region, those are now visible. So with just a few clicks, we got to change what Vic saw. Well, let's do that again, except this time let's give him, instead of masked identity access, let's give him clear access, okay? So what does that do? Well, oh, and let's do one more thing. Let's give him access to financial data, okay? So now, instead of having this column nulled out, the, the amount column, and having only a partial uh, visibility into the secure name, if we refresh this data now, it's going to query the, the same set of data, but now it's returning the uh, full name because we gave him clear instead of masked access, and he gets to see the financial data. But now we changed our mind again, and we don't want him to actually see that financial, so let's reset it back to the way it was. And now Vic is back to seeing exactly what he did before. Now, another thing that's interesting is we might want to refer to uh, Ivan the imposter. Now, Ivan is is an actually defined user, but he has no roles assigned to him, so he he can't see any data. So let's go out here. Let's impersonate Ivan. And you'll see that when we look at what policies Ivan has in place, there are none. What does that mean? Well, what that means is that when Ivan runs 
the same report, he sees nothing. Zero payee, payee rows, zero transaction rows, and zero um, in the join, you know, putting it all together view. Well, what if we decide that Ivan is no longer a posture and we really want Ivan to be able to see some of that data? Well, let's select a row for Ivan. Let's give him the admin role. Why not go all the way and refresh Ivan's data? And now he should see all 33 payee roles, all 35 transaction roles. Basically, he sees everything that Anna would have with just a couple clicks. So that demonstrates how InfoSecure can be used to manage meta policies where the views that produce that data, restrict rows and columns simultaneously for cell level security that can be easily managed and maintained so that uh, we can catch up with changing restrictions, regulations, and requirements. So with that, we'll go back to our slide deck. We've covered Anna, Vic, and Ivan, the imposter. Let's talk a little bit more about those three tiers in the database. Now, you might, you might say, well, I don't want to have to I don't want to be forced to manage my user role combinations within InfoSecure because we already have those, say, in LDAP or maybe in some master data system. And maybe we already have relationships between various metadata elements in our master data system. And we want to leverage those. Well, we can do that because the API can be leveraged from your any of these systems, or we can talk directly to the database to manage those metadata policies. Of course, database access needs to be managed by your dba but but infosecure gives you the option to not only manage data at any of these levels using data that you might already metadata that you might already have but also allows you the ability to virtualize any of the objects within our schema so that the policies that are in effect change as your active directory environment changes or as your master data environment changes when you make changes to your data the meta policies are reflecting that change through virtualization. So it makes the management all, all the easier. Um, another quality of InfoSecure is that we can add InfoSecure into our data warehouse as we is the most common use, but it can also be replicated the same policies mm -hmm. out to various other systems so that your whole enterprise is secured by the same set of policies. That way, secure views give users only access to the data that they should see. And when they run their queries, whatever, through whatever mechanism, whether it be your BI tool or through applications or machine learning models or even ad hoc SQL, all of those are filtered through the same set of rules and you have truly an enterprise solution. One of the best parts is it can be implemented in days, literally hours for a proof of concept and then uh, a couple iterations through phases where we go on through training and most organizations start seeing value within a few days of the start of implementing InfoSecure. So it does allow for intuitive data access points, so it makes it easy for the user to consume data, data as a product, if you will. It's manageable all the way down to the cell level. It's configurable with low code. Most of the code that's, that's used in the secure views is actually generated through the UI and it's technology exhaust agnostic so that you can deploy it on multiple technologies simultaneously, or it's compatible if you migrate from one database platform to another, your policies lift and shift with your data. We've used it to secure data and protect data at a variety of, inter of uh, interesting use cases across many industries, and we'd love to talk to you as well about how InfoSecure can help you and your organization.